This is named one of the darkest twisted cases in America, the Killers Hall siblings. It's almost as if one was an angel sibling and a devil sibling. And at the end, evil took over. But does Andrew deserve a second chance at life? And how scary even siblings can be? Have you ever checked your siblings last night? Just kidding. If you guys really want to share the words on these videos, remember just by hitting the like button, hitting the algorithm, letting a lot of people hear about these cases that needs to be heard again. Remember to subscribe and I always reply to my early words, so hit that notification bell. Just want to say thank you to Caseify for sending me these amazing military-grade protection cases. I've only been using Caseify military-grade protection cases. These cases are amazing because it will protect you from up to 6.6 .6 feet. I'll do a drop test right now. All right, I'm going to do the drop test on this hard floor and see if it's going to be okay. So my phone is all in function. Six feet. My phone is good. I also customize it, put 444 on there for the lucky number. They have tons of designs. You could also customize your cases, which I have done in my case. Look at these beautiful cases that I've customized. They have a mirror one and they let you have protection and personality. The antimicrobial coating keeps your case germ-free, killing 99% of bacteria. Their cases are also made from partially recycled plastic. So if you want the ultimate protection and beauty for your phone cases, remember to go to caseify.com slash crazygrace and you guys will get some discount, 15% off your case. Cases, so so link down below and thank you so much to case five for sponsoring today's video This case is really famous so you guys might have heard of this But this whole family was an immigrant from Korea in the 70s They grew up from a very traditional parents if you guys are from another country and if you guys have traditional parents You do know how sometimes traditional especially Asian parents could be they could be very strict I didn't even know my necklace was falling up. Why didn't y'all tell me? So supposedly the father mr. Sa was a traditional one probably can be seen as pretty scary to the kids. They say he was in the military and that he came from an elite family, I think meaning at least a family who had a pretty good amount of money back then. So the Sal family had first two kids, one the eldest son and a daughter. Now unfortunately the eldest son had a tragic accident. Apparently he fell from somewhere and he ended up dying. A lot of traditional families and still today they put a lot of their household trust to the firstborn son because son was the one who was supposed to carry on their tradition traditions, their cultures, their pretty much everything about their household family. Now that their one and only beloved first son passed away and only had a daughter, father Mr. Seo really demanded his wife to give him a son or they were just gonna get a divorce and the marriage was over. Now they say by this time Miss Seo was in her early 40s and she was kind of iffy if she could get pregnant again or she could even be a good mother being a little bit an older woman. But because she was so determined to really stick with her family and her husband. She did everything from fertility treatments, fertility drugs, to get pregnant, and voila! Nine months later, they had their second son. Andrew was born and surprisingly, he apparently had the same birthmark on the same spot as their first son, Pyeongchul. Their family really believed that he was their eldest son reborn. So after Andrew was born, they decided to immigrate to the US. As you could see, it felt like the woman in the family, the daughter, wasn't as appreciated by their traditional father. Now ever since young, Catherine and Andrew both helped their parents to translate and to pretty much settle in America. Now ever since young, Catherine, the daughter, was always very different from her brother, Andrew. Andrew was the one who always obeyed his parents, always helped his parents out at their dry cleaning shop, and Andrew always, even till this day, said that family obedience was drilled into his head ever since he was young, and he was okay with it because that was just his personality. He wanted to help out his parents and he always never questioned and whatever the parents told him to do, he just did. But Catherine was kind of the rebellious one. She always questioned things. She didn't want to do things that their parents always told him to. And she really started to dislike this traditional Korean family that she had. She sometimes would lie, run away, pretty much went everything against the traditional parents. Now whenever Catherine did rebel, father was old tradition so he would spank and punish the kids. Now, now apparently there was this one incident that we believe Catherine and the father just snapped and something went really bad. So one day, I believe Catherine was under 16, she was a young teenager. The father found out that she was dating and seeing other boys and according to Andrew, apparently there was this Latino guy on the phone asking his father, where is your daughter? 
and because of this his father got so angry the fact that she was seeing boys at such a young age and according to the father this guy was super disrespectful to the father saying where's your daughter so the father and Catherine was bickering back and forth yelling at each other just having this huge fight and apparently the father was kind of slapping Catherine around again spanking the kids for her behavior and this is when Catherine just had enough and he scratched the father's shirt he was bleeding in his chest apparently and again this was just what got the father just just at the end of his edge so apparently he got a bottle of oil put it on Catherine and himself and try to lit the fire and said this is the day we're going to die together for whatever reason this lighter would not light and that's when the mother came in and just separated them both and stopped the fight and this was the point that Catherine and her father just completely stopped talking to each other and their trust was gone so according to the experts they believe that this was when the grudge against her father and her family in the traditional ways and everything about herself started to grow inside in a very negative dark way of course in the young Catherine's eyes maybe she was doing her best she was trying her best wanted to be liked but the harsh love by her parents made her see the world in a different light maybe she really didn't know what love was now fast forward a little bit Andrew was 11 and Catherine was about 16 years old and the father Mr. So was diagnosed with stomach cancer. Andrew was there next to his bed caring for his father and he was also in the local Korean American newspapers for being such a great son. Catherine on the other hand never came to see her father until he passed away. Apparently on the deathbed of her father in the hospital she just came saw and left. Experts believe that Catherine, instead of feeling remorse that her father passed away, she was finally free from someone that always tried to suppress her. Now after the father died, Miss Ho went on to work at a dry cleaners and Andrew was also always there to help his mother. Catherine also, on the other hand, was really never there at the dry cleaners and she was still again coming home whenever she wanted. There was no curfew for her and she just always did what she wanted to do. Although her mother knew that she could not control Catherine she had that soft spot for her kids and she would still gave Catherine allowance to whenever she went out whenever she asked for money and Andrew says that he always felt like Catherine was just using his mother's kindness Catherine was also known to be very promiscuous around guys according to the people that who have seen her and encountered her she was kind of hitting on older guys and one day when she was attending a health fitness club she met a man named Robert now Robert was around seven to eight years older than her and she was 16 but I guess back then this whole thing was okay so Catherine and Robert started to date each other and something clicked about them they really liked each other not long after that 13 year old Andrew came home and there was police surrounding his house he was only 13 years old he didn't know what was happening and Robert and Catherine came up to him and explained that his mother was murdered at her dry cleaners according to the forensics someone was standing on top of her literally stopping her about I believe 27 times 13 year old you guys that is a kid and to not have your parents anymore, that is going to affect you in a very, very deep way. Now in this murder case, again, Miss Ho was stabbed multiple times, her wallet was missing, and the cash register was open. But there was only $100 in the cash register, so for someone to have brutally murdered her for just $100 of cash, it just absolutely did not make sense, but there was no forensic evidence that they could collect to determine who did this. And a lot of people at first, even police, believe that it was just a robbery gone bad. Of course, Andrew, being very angry and very upset, he told Robert and Catherine that, you know, we have to find this robber. Like, we have to see what happened. We have to bring justice to mom. And apparently, Robert and Catherine said they will never find the robber. It's too difficult. And they both agreed saying that we should just move on which is not the reaction you would expect if your mother has been brutally murdered to just move on i mean how would have 13 year old andrew felt even hearing that from his own sister the only family member now he had was his sister again he still has this 
obedience toward his family. So now he has to abide by his sister. He had a very rocky relationship with his sister after their parents passed away, fighting with his sister often as she accused him of bringing girls over the house. And Andrew even once ran away from the house because his sister was accusing him for things that he didn't do. But he soon realized that without his sister, there was nothing that he could do. He was only 13 years old. Now, because of the mother's death, they had an $800,000 inheritance from the insurance. Now, apparently back then, the male in the family got the insurance money. So it was actually Andrew who was supposed to take care of this $800,000. But because Andrew was a younger one and he was a minor, now it was his sister Catherine who took control of this insurance money. Robert moved into the Tull family's house and Andrew says he did feel awkward that they were getting rid of their parents' room and living a new life there. But he was still grateful that his sister had someone to lean on now. And now Robert became this male role model for Andrew. Robert was a man who actually didn't have even a college degree. And according to his family and friends, he didn't have much things going on until Catherine fixed him up in hopes that he will once become a successful businessman one day. Catherine bought him a new set of thousand dollars worth of clothes, cars, and they even started a business together. They even bought a new house and apparently Catherine bought everything new for the house. Of course, where did they get this money from? It was probably the insurance money from their mother. Catherine herself also fixed herself up by wearing expensive clothes and makeup that made her look impeccable according to her friends. According to a lot of people, she was the person that was able to achieve anything that she wanted and anything that she put her mind to, it came true. Now, Catherine did want her little brother to become a leader, to do well in school, to become a strong person, and that's what Andrew went to do. Andrew joined the football team and he became a class president and he was being an outgoing star in the school, even though he was one of the only few Asians. He became a valedictorian and later even got a full scholarship to college. So it seemed like even for Andrew, he technically did what he wanted. He really exceeded in classes and I'm sure it made his parents really happy. Catherine and Robert started business. They were in a new house and luxury clothing and items. I mean, what could go wrong? Now it was one hot summer day when Andrew says that he came home and he saw Robert out in the garage drinking and pretty much drunk. Robert in his drunk state started to talk about his sister in front of Andrew and started to pretty much talk bad about her. Robert started saying, I did all this for her, but she goes out and cheats on me. The only reason why she deals with me is because she knows all my secrets and I know her secrets. Now it was predicted that Andrew and Catherine always fought about money and their business. But it is interesting and keep in mind he said that she knows my secrets and I know her secrets. Now, not long after this, one day, Catherine called Andrew to complain about how Rob was going crazy, breaking windows, and was hitting her. So Andrew came home and everybody was having this huge fight. And at this day, apparently Robert had even a gun and they were just going back and forth, yelling, bickering about how they ruined each other's life although they were living in this new house and luxury items. But according to Andrew, this was when he lost all respect for Rob. Rob was someone that he really looked up to ever since his parents died, but to have a gun in his hands, always being drunk, and apparently according to Catherine, that Rob was behaving very inappropriate towards her, just got Andrew to be really pissed off. Now, even after all this family drama, Andrew finally went off to college, and it seems like he was having a great time there. Now, during his college, college days, he was saying that Catherine would occasionally call Andrew to always talk about Rob. So you could tell, little by little, Catherine started feeding these things, feeding her dislike about Rob to her own brother. It's like, oh my god, leave your brother alone. Why would you do that to your brother? Like, if I did not like someone, I'll keep it to myself or tell my girlfriends. Like, why would I tell my brother that's in college having the best time of his life? But anyway, it was one break when Andrew decided to come back home for a little while before he had to go back to school. One day, Catherine and Andrew decided to go on this little lunch and Catherine had something to confess to Andrew. Now, Catherine decided to confess what really happened on the night their mother passed away. 
According to Catherine, Robert was desperate for money because he had a lot of debt. And Catherine and Robert was having a difficult time always fighting about money and she told Robert that everything will be fine one day when her mother dies because they have this big inheritance money. Again, $800,000, that's a lot of money. According to her words, I didn't ask Robert to but he killed our mother for money. It was probably Catherine's idea in the first place. And she's kind of sugarcoating this, but we'll talk about that in a little bit. Now, Andrew's response was, let's call the police. What are you waiting for? We know the perpetrator. We know who did this. We now have to get justice. But Catherine responded, if you call the police, they will think I was the accomplice. And if he goes, I go. You have to get rid of him for mom. What kind of sister? instructs their own brother to kill. Now this is how the theory goes. The theory goes that Rob couldn't cut off his relationship with Catherine because she was paying for everything. And that Catherine couldn't let go of him because he would have turned to the police to tell their dirty little secret of what they did to their mother. Hence why she wanted to get her brother to kill instead of getting the police involved. Now some believe that it was actually Catherine that killed their mother and she's trying to frame Robert into everything. But in my personal opinion, let me know what your opinion is, but I personally don't think Catherine was the one who actually physically killed the mother. I personally believe Catherine is more the manipulative mind killer meaning she uses other people and manipulates using her beauty, her attractiveness to get other people to do what she wants. Just to mind you guys, these are all theories. It does not mean that Robert was the actual murder of Miss Ha. There's no solid evidence to point to this. And who knows, Catherine could have hired a hitman. The truth, we will just never know. But of course, at this point, Andrew was just so angry at Robert and that Kathy, Catherine, was the only family member that Andrew had left. He had no one else left, no one else to look for. And who are you going to believe? Of course, your one and only family member, your sister. This is when Catherine handed over the gun to Andrew. And Andrew was only 19 at this time, 19, going to college. So Kathy and Andrew finally came up with a plan on how to get rid of Rob. So Catherine called Rob on the phone saying that her car broke down and that he needed to come and help her fix it. So Robert decided to come to the house and help Catherine. Now this is a little bit of extra information, but according to the police, Rob was on the line with his other girlfriend while talking to Catherine. Parent Catherine and Rob had an open relationship. So finally, Rob came over to the garage thinking that he was going to help his fiance and that's when Andrew who was hiding inside the garage pulled the trigger and killed Robert. He says that at that moment he pulled the trigger his thoughts went back to when he was 13 years old cleaning up his own mother's blood at the dry cleaners and Rob was standing there besides him so chill telling Andrew this is how you clean up blood so casually. Also that promise that he made to his father at his deathbed about how he was gonna take care of his mother forever also flashed across his head. All of this led him to pull the trigger. Fast forward, eventually Andrew was caught by the police at the airport. When he was caught, he was carrying $65,000 in Robert's ID. He finally admitted to killing Robert himself and the reason and the motive behind it was to make his sister happy. Now at court, apparently Andrew showed no remorse to the family and this was one of the reasons why the judge put him to a hundred year sentence. Now during Catherine's trials, apparently Catherine fled. She was on the runaway and she fled to Hawaii. She had different names she was going by, different looks. And she was even on America's Most Wanted until she eventually turned herself to the police claiming that she was innocent. But at the end, of course, Kathy was convicted to life in prison. She was accused of manipulating her own brother and possibly her own fiance into killing her own family. It is also rumored that one of the biggest reasons why Kathy wanted to get rid of Rob was for his insurance money. Apparently he had a $250,000 insurance. Catherine also showed no remorse in court. Now today, Andrew is in his, I believe his 40s. And according to Andrew, he says that it's sad even in the Bible and the old times, it was eye for an eye. But in today's society, when you kill a monster, you also become a monster. I was really convinced that Robert killed my mother. But of course, according to the judges and the law and Robert's family, he was a willing participant in this crime. Now, unfortunately, his mother's murder case at her dry cleaners is still an unsolved 
unsolved mystery today. It never went to court and still to this day, we technically don't know who actually did it. And here's a little cherry to the top of this crazy story. Andrew says that in prison, he sent a letter to his sisters saying that it's okay, we're still siblings, we're in this together, we're family. And Catherine's response to Andrew was, don't ever talk to me again. I don't have a brother. That is the last slap in the face, especially for someone like Andrew who had no family. He even lost a sister doing the dirty deed for her. So the question that a lot of people have and that people have been raising is, should Andrew get a second chance at life? Now, because of this crazy story and kind of where Andrew could have come from and why he did the things that he did, he did get a lawyer and attorney and try to lesser his sentence so that he could be free one day. The lesser sentence, I believe, was denied, but Andrew is eligible for parole in 2034. My little personal two cents is that, according to, of course, Andrew's statements, and if this everything that Andrew says is true and honest, I do believe that Andrew should get a second chance at life. I would also like to ask, do you think Catherine turned up this way because of her strict parents? And what are the effects of having certain parents that give harsh punishments? Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video.